This is start from the beginning. Oil we uh, found until today. Uh, this audio, uh, this video has explained uh, since beginning. Can anyone explain what you understood by this? The history of uh, oil, sir, from where it began uh, and uh, the prices, the the increase of price, the inflation, sir, and uh, the countries taking part in production. Yeah, it was informative, sir. Yeah. It's very informative, right? So, uh, uh, today, uh, I think our, uh, Mr. Rajesh has explained to you, uh, during this, uh, uh, the whole month, we will be covering uh, various uh, uh, topics on the, which are related to oil and gas industry. Uh, basically, we will be uh, dealing with oil and gas refinery, storage terminals, uh, oil and gas uh, refinery, planning, trading, how it happens, then reservation simulations, uh, then we will have the oil drilling operation, onshore, offshore, uh, then port, we will have the uh, civil engineering uh, structures, as well as uh, mechanical designs. So, as you know, uh, oil industry cannot be uh, operated only with the help of only petroleum engineers or chemical engineers or process engineers. To build the refinery, we need civil engineers, we need the mechanical engineers. Uh, so uh, all the engineering streams are required in engineering, uh, in, in oil and gas sector. So what we designed this course that most of the student or their parent know that mechanical engineer will have scope only in uh, some manufacturing unit or some design unit and all these things, or automotive industry. Civil engineer uh, think that he's having the scope only in real estate or construction or uh, some uh, contract or road. No, there is a huge scope for civil engineers, mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, and uh, chemical. All the engineers are required in oil and gas sector. Not only engineers, even normal graduates under uh, BCom, BA, BSc, uh, IIM graduate, MBAs. So, so. All type of uh, the uh, manpower is required to manage the entire organization. So we need all the expertise. Uh, the organization cannot run with only single expertise. We require multiple, multiple uh, expertise and multiple, multi-dimensional uh, uh, expertise required. Then only organization function uh, professionally. So uh, during this entire course, we will be taking you all the topics and at the end, you will understand uh, that, okay, uh, why, by participating in these uh, sessions, uh, the oil and gas sector. So you will be in a position to make up your mind at the end of the session that, yes, I want to focus and join uh, oil industry. So during this session, we'll also tell you why, why this uh, oil industry is very uh, lucrative, because as compared to other industries, the oil industry uh, pays you very high packages, high salaries. Plus, it is a very respectable job. There are various uh, good opportunities to uh, go abroad uh, in Middle East and UK, US, uh, Venezuela or, uh, or Malaysia, Singapore, uh, Brunei. Wherever oil is there, there is a huge scope for uh, the engineering stream people to uh, to get the job there. How to get the job there? This is what we are going to teach you during these sessions. Okay. So uh, we'll prepare your mind uh, to, towards it. Okay. So even though you are doing uh, undergraduate or PD, it doesn't matter. Even if you are in first year or second year or uh, final year, that doesn't matter. We will be teaching you very simple methodology, our practical experience. Uh, this is a practical experience sharing with you. You are, you are learning the basic fundamental of uh, engineering in different different uh, stream but we will be transforming our practical experience to you okay this will be totally interactive session whatever questions you have you have to keep asking us get yourself clarified and we will move on okay another point i will uh, tell you uh, you will get the excellent exposure so with this exposure you will be in a position to stand uh, in front of uh, any uh, once you finish your graduation or post-graduation, you can stand in front of the interview people 
the panel uh, who will be taking your interview and once you say we have gone through this training uh, uh, you can show your project report at the end of the session you will uh, have to prepare a project report on the entire session we will guide you how to do that also once they see your project report when they start asking you question you will be in a position to explain uh, all the questions raised by them very confidently so this is what uh, the preparation the, the fee what we are charging is very minimal uh, experience what we have uh, and uh, we can charge lakhs of rupees but especially uh, for the younger generation being a entrepreneurs uh, being a industry people we thought uh, practically we would have given you free but uh, the tendency if you give anything free it doesn't have value that's why we charge this minimum fee which is, which if you go anywhere in the world you will not find uh, uh, the the amount of exposure we will be giving you uh, during these sessions multi dimensional uh, streams will be explaining to you you will get excellent exposure and uh, at the end of the session you will tell me sir really we got uh, a lot of knowledge through this session okay so i'll not take much time uh, we'll keep on discussing uh, regularly now uh, today uh, i will be uh, giving you the entire um, uh, understanding of oil and gas sector okay what is upstream what is midstream what is downstream okay so i'll just give you complete uh, so today we'll take uh, that session uh, tomorrow we will have the complete refining then we'll have the project management i would also like to teach you how to build the refinery the time is very short but i will make sure all the fundamental and uh, this thing uh, to build the refinery also from uh, the concept designing stage to uh, construction to management to startup to maintenance so all these steps i will be explaining to you how to build the refinery if you want to become entrepreneur and from you at one point of time uh, say after 5 year or 10 year if you think that yes i have somebody to invest in me and i want to start some refinery so this knowledge will help you okay so uh, believe me i will give you the complete rundown how to build the refinery you, you will know what type of exposure you will be getting in this short period okay so today i will cover you with the uh, uh, understanding of oil and gas sector uh, which is uh, upstream midstream and downstream so just have a patience i'll run with the ppt inter expert we are the feeding the future ha uh, breakthrough in oil and gas sector that is our motto here okay who who has organized the plus 40 years experience people who are the owners who are the entrepreneurs uh, who has organized this uh, uh, internship program for you especially for you okay this is a oil uh, uh, online internship program so we will take session uh, today and tomorrow on this if you see here upstream midstream downstream in the first block if you see the drilling operation okay you can see all the uh, rigs are there okay uh, offshore rig onshore rig so okay so this is called upstream then production uh, so once you do the complete drilling then your production starts so you, if you see here um, the all the production facilities uh, uh, the crude oil gathering uh, areas are there okay so you you see in the second block then transport so whatever production uh, happens you transport through uh, via ship or through pipeline uh, to the uh, storage area okay and then from storage area it goes to uh, downstream area where the refining take place uh, and during the refining whatever product refine it goes to for distribution to the uh, different different depots terminals uh end user buyers industries so this is how the entire upstream midstream and downstream uh in one uh, diagram uh, you understood initially that when when you do the drilling operation uh, during drilling then you do the production uh, after the production it goes to the storage area by pipeline and this thing and then goes to refining and then from refinery uh, you get all the finished products from crude oil you get all the uh, lpg naphtha jet kerosene uh, diesel furnace oil uh, bitumen some lubricant oils and from so 
this is a complete uh, cycle. Okay. So I'll just give you the brief on the upstream. What is upstream area? What is upstream means? If you see here, you can see the offshore oil platform here. Huh? So in this platform, if you see the complete structures are there, where uh, exploration and production of the um, in 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 upstream you uh, you focus uh, on exploration and production. Then do in this you do drilling and unconventional upstream. Okay, upstream business characteristics and key players in the upstream. So these are the five point uh, covers in upstream area. What is upstream? Most of the oil and gas companies are organized according to business segment assets or function. So upstream is what engine exploration and production. Okay. So this this is a business segment uh, called uh, exploration and production. Upstream is. Can you tell me what is upstream? Anyone? Can you just tell me, please? What is upstream? Exploration and production. Yeah. So this is a sector. Uh, so this is the initial. Okay. So uh, when you want to start uh, uh, doing the uh, first, you do the studies and all. I'll go go with this. Okay. Uh, so where to locate them? How deep and how far uh, drilling operation take place? How to design, construct, and operate and manage them? Okay. So in this upstream, uh, you do all these things, uh, uh, all these studies and everything. Okay. So uh, so ex exploration involves what operator uh, obtaining leads from the owner of the offshore. So what do you mean by this? See, uh, all the oil blocks uh, or oil uh, locations, uh, the, it belongs to government, any government, whether you take to India or uh, anywhere in the world, the locations are uh, belong to government. So what happened government, they do the auction. Uh, or they do the uh, invite the tenders from the uh, different different uh, crude oil or uh, drilling operators or owners or refiners and they do the bidding and through bidding they get the oil block uh, areas and once they get the oil block area they then they do all the um, the operator uh, what they do uh, they conduct the geolo geological and geophysical surveys to determine the first well site which is called wildcat well okay so, so so during this exploration stage uh, these are the studies that are taken place geological geophysical surveys are taken okay and uh, then only they go to the next because unless and until you do the proper study uh, you cannot go to next level and straight away you cannot start doing digging the or drilling the operation you have to do the basic survey first basic uh, data everything has to be collected whether the site what is selected, the oil block what is selected, you will have the sufficient oil to do the drilling operation. Because drilling operation is a huge uh, investment. You have to do the multi-dimensional, multi-million uh, investment is required. So prior doing the drilling operation, you have to do the uh, proper uh, studies. That is, happens only in exploration stage. Then you go to drilling. Once you finish uh, the drilling, uh, the exploration, you go for drilling. So drilling is what? Physically creating the bar holes, bore holes in the ground. Okay. So if you see here in the picture, this is how the uh, bore holes are okay, at the ground. And uh, so this work is done by the rig contractors. So, so when I explained to you earlier, what is the scope for civil engineer or mechanical engineer? This is where the mechanical as well as civil engineers uh, work as well as uh, chemical and uh, petroleum engineer. So it's a combination of all the engineering stream. They work in these drilling operations. So we have scope here also. All the engineering st uh, students have the excellent st scope in uh, drilling operation as well as in uh, exploration stage also. So drilling is the physically creating the borehole. Okay. So this is what I explained to you. So in uh, drilling program is prepared by a drilling engineer that consists of a drilling rig to be used for the well, what type of drilling rig is required, proposed location for drilling, uh, hole sizes and depths, casing sizes and depth, drilling fluid specification, directional drilling information, well control equipment and procedures, bits and hydraulics uh, programs. So these are the, uh, uh, the drilling engineer has to work out uh, 
uh, all these operations and then only they give go for drilling operations so you will you will have more uh, detail uh, during uh, rajesh kumar he will be taking on oil drilling operation he will give you more in details okay i'll be just giving you overview now then uh, after drilling is there you, you start producing so production is where the reserves are converted into cash okay so if you see here this is the well and this is how the pumping oil pumping is going on at the uh, well area so production is where the reserves are converted into cash Me means the oil reserves means whatever is there in the ground uh, crude oil it is being extracted or by pump and which will be converted into cash means this is your cash flow you can you start generating the cash flow through when you start producing the oil but until the um, exploration and uh, the drilling stage you are only spending the money but during production once you start getting the oil you start generating the revenue for the organization what are the basics of uh, enp exploration drilling and production these are the basics so uh, there are different types of uh, drilling operation takes place you know horizontal drilling hydraulic fracturing subsea engineering so uh, there are different different types are there this is called hydraulic uh, fracturing means hydraulic fracturing or fracking is the process of injecting water chemicals and sand into the wells huh? this resulting uh, fractures in the surrounding rocks formation to allow hydrocarbon to escape if you do the fracking uh, if you see here uh, is escape the oil uh, from that and then you start uh, pumping to the uh, uh, pumping through the pipe okay so uh, you have to inject what sand water and some additives and then uh, you do the fracturing and uh, once you fracture uh, you get uh, rock formation to allow uh, hydrocarbons to flow hydraulic fracturing this is the operation takes place if you see here there are uh, this is called offshore okay offshore drilling so there are deep water drillers drilling uh, where drilling operations takes place like um, uh, 1000 to 3000 or 4000 uh, uh, meters uh, you have to go deep uh, to explore the oil and how it does uh, you have to keep you have to uh, uh, create the structures uh, this way to do the drilling operation because here in deep water uh, you have to have the storage everything uh, along with the uh, uh, dig operation area there. so what is the uh, estimated time frame for uh, uh, exploration and production normally uh, from exploration to production uh, what is the time frame okay so if you see uh, once you get the oil block what do you do first you do the due diligence uh, then pre qualification happens then you do the study so first 3 to 5 years is goes into due diligence pre qualification exploration and seismic studies site survey so first 3 to 5 years uh, any uh, operator who, uh, what happens they, these are the uh, steps uh, first 3 to 5 years they have to go through this then next four to five years then you start exploring exploration of drilling and uh, drilling operation then uh, one uh, then appraisal drilling and development so once you found the oil uh, then you start doing the drilling operation then next phase is once you found the oil uh, you started production so normally each oil well will uh, last uh, for 10 to 30 years depending on the uh, how the uh, production flow comes okay so this is the life of the uh, any oil wells uh, in between you have to do the maintenance you have to do the uh, injecting the uh, different gases and uh, reactivate uh, the uh, oil wells so that uh, sometimes what happens during the production after 5 years or 10 years the production depletes so what you have to do you have to uh, uh, you have to act reactivate those oil wells and uh, you start getting the more production so these are the uh, time frame uh, from uh, exploration to production area. upstream business characteristics uh, see it is a high risk high risk and high return why it is high risk because uh, upstream uh, what happens sometimes you have done the exploration and drilling but you have not found the oil so whatever investment has happened uh, in goes into waste so it is called high high risk why why it is high return because uh, if you uh, 
if you have taken the oil oil blocks and you started getting uh, oil uh, immediately uh, without any hassles that means uh, you got the lottery so uh, it is a high return so that means you started flowing the oil uh, so it is a high return also then highly regulated means the uh, this area is highly regulated means it is under the control of the government any government through government only these oil blocks are taken impact by global political politics see uh, the the uh, what happened globally uh, if you see lot of uh, politics are going on so uh, it is it has a uh, high impact on uh, this so most of the time if anybody want to do the upstream operation they think uh, whether uh, any situation in the politics will change uh, there will be war or there will, there will be any uh, issues so uh, Uh, the people have to take very precautionary measures to take oil blocks uh, for production and exploration and all. Okay, is a totally in technology intensive. Okay, so uh, you require high uh, technology to assess uh, whether the oil uh, uh, oil will be found or not. Uh, so it is very uh, technology intensive. You have to be very very careful. That's why we need experts like you. Once you once you enter into oil industry, whether you are a chemical Uh, civil, uh, you will learn this, uh, and uh, within a five year or ten year, you become expert. So, uh, so the our, our organization depend on your skills, how you assess uh, the uh, the studies, and based on uh, the studies, uh, you'll be in a position to ascertain whether this oil will uh, oil block will give you the oil or not. So, it is totally on technology uh, intensive uh, upstream. Who are the players? in uh, uh, upstream there are majors okay majors like um, uh, uh, this uh, like uh, chevron or ongc or uh, uh, caltex uh, exxon mobil bp shell uh, now reliance is there in india kane energy so these are the majors are there then noc like national oil companies like hindustan petroleum indian oil Uh, then uh, adna abu dhabi national oil company emirates national oil company kuwait Nas uh, national oil companies qatar uh, national oil companies uh, like uh, so these are the nocs uh, independent there are some private player also who are uh, in this uh, oil uh, production area then uh, oil field services oil field services is very important role you will have a tremendous opportunities in oil field services area all the engineers because Uh, if you see most of the oil um, uh, these uh, productions and all is uh, oil field services companies take the jobs they are the major contractors for the production as well as for the services and the supplies so uh, this is major area these are the majors like chevron reliance exxon mobil enos is like saudi aramco ongc and all independents like conoco philips marathon oil oil field services like halliburton schumberger and all these companies so these are the companies what they do uh, they do the exploration drilling uh, testing producing and maintaining so these are the players may plays a major uh, role so you have a uh, very good scope in these uh, companies also okay so you have uh, scope in uh, all the engineering people have the scope in major oil companies uh, national oil companies uh, independents and the oil field services so uh, think on this uh, see, you don't have only scope only in uh, noc you have there are four major areas uh, which i explained to you you will have uh, entry in this uh, majors nocs independent oil field services initially you can go as a uh, uh, as a intern then you can uh, enter as a management trainee once you finish your training they will accept you for uh, uh, the proper position then your career starts so you have huge uh, scope in these four uh, uh, areas four players you know what is crude oil okay there are hundreds of different of crude oil no? uh, crude oil there are various crude see uh, bombay high crude is a different quality specification than the middle east crude uh, there is a different uh, uh, quality of crude in venezuela uh, in uh, us uh, brunei each country will have different different uh, uh, specification of the crude mainly the crude are uh, light crude medium crude and heavy crude okay 
So it depends on the density of the crude, APA of the crude uh, is uh, derived, uh, how, what is uh, light, what is medium, and what is uh, heavy. Okay. So uh, if you see here, light crude oil produce higher percentage of gasoline. So uh, when you process light crude, you get maximum light product like gasoline and diesel. And, and if you uh, process uh, heavy crude, you get mostly the uh, furnace oil or heavy products. So I think uh, I have covered uh, upstream uh, in uh, brief. Now we'll go to midstream. Okay. So what is the mid midstream? Uh, midstream oil and gas segment uh, encompasses facilities and process of. See what happened? Uh, whatever oil is produced uh, in upstream area, it comes to midstream. So what happened uh, in this midstream? Uh, it uh, it gathered. It comes to gathering station storages. So if any uh, uh, poisonous gases are there, or uh, sand, or anything, uh, during the, in, in this uh, midstream area, you do the processing. And uh, then whatever, uh, after the processing, you then you transfer to the uh, downstream for further uh, refining process. So uh, in this uh, uh, midstream is a totally processing, storage, and transportation. Uh, processing, transportation, and um, so this is the um, key area of uh, this midstream. See, midstream is a low risk business because uh, whatever risk was there is already covered in upstream area. So they have done the production upstream and now the product has come to midstream. So it's a low risk business. Uh, contains regulated components. Okay, so whatever uh, you are getting the product, crude oil are from, which you are getting in this midstream. Depends on health of uh, upstream. Okay, so uh, it depends on midstream, it depends on the upstream. So grass prices affect the demand. Okay, so whatever prices are there in the market, so there is a supply demand position. So accordingly, prices changes. What are the characteristics of uh, midstream segment? Uh, Midstream segment is considered a low risk business. Okay, I explained to you just now. See, who are the uh, participants in uh, midstream? Like there are companies like Gale India, Kinder Morgan, Enbridge, Trans Canada, uh, then William uh, companies. So these are the companies that are mainly uh, in midstream participants and uh, who are working in midstream area. So international company like Kosh or uh, so these are the companies that are expert in distribution, storage, processing, fractionation, and marketing. So as I explained to you, uh, midstream is a uh, uh, whatever crude comes uh, from the uh, upstream, uh, it gathers in the uh, in this area and they do the complete processing. Okay, it's not refining, only processing. Uh, what is the processing means? Uh, as it is oil comes in this area and you do the you do the complete separation of sand muck and all you remove the high poisonous gases in this uh, you uh, separate all these things and then uh, then the uh, proper crude oil is um, is transported to uh, downstream area okay and how you transport this to refinery and all through uh, wagon or through pipelines okay uh, or uh, through the truck, mainly it goes via ship or pipeline or wagon, rail wagons. These are the natural gases. During the processing, what happened? You cover natural gases also. So you recover and that you put into the storage and you transport that to the for the actual uses. So there are a lot of uh, natural gases also uh, during the process uh, you recover. So that's why it is called NGL, you know, natural gases. Then you get also LNG. Okay, during this process, you get a lot of uh, LNG, and uh, uh, you recover that, and you supply to the for uh, energy purposes, for energy usage purposes. These are the LNG tanks. See storage of crude oil. See normally what happens? All the uh, once uh, entire uh, crude uh, from midstream. Uh, this is uh, gathered in the uh, midstream area. Okay, so uh, so you get a properly processed crude in this area, and then it goes to refinery for uh, 
uh, refining purposes. So these are the uh, in India. I will say, tell you uh, these are the such type of crude oil you might have seen the tanks. Uh, if you get time, once the COVID nineteen finishes, we can organize some meeting in refinery visit also in future, uh, either in uh, Kochi or uh, or in India. So definitely we can organize. Uh, so this is the strategic storage capacities of India. In Vaisakha Pratnam, we have one point four million tons of uh, crude capacity. I am talking. Then uh, Mangalore, uh, Karnataka is about two point five. Uh, then Odisha, four point five million tons. See why we have to have the static storage uh, capacity because uh, for the emergencies like war or any epidemics or anything, uh, you should have the static storage uh, to cover uh, the if any uh, eventualities. So we should have the storage for at least uh, in India at least it is for twenty one days, but in uh, foreign countries is like uh, forty days and all. So India also is increasing their uh, static storage capacity slowly. Uh, when i started my career it was uh, not very much but now uh, the slowly uh, all the government are investing money in uh, storage areas storage capacities are increasing and they are importing and storing so uh, the country people will not face any problems uh, if any eventuality is there okay so these are the uh, storage areas uh, natural gas storages are like this these are the uh, these are called capsules okay Okay, uh, so now uh, see uh, from the uh, upstream. Uh, if you see here, uh, these are the uh, different different segments. I will explain you through the diagram. See crude oil from well on uh, on land. Okay, so this is the jack up re, uh, jack jack pump. You know, so this is how the pumping takes place. Uh, from here, uh, it goes through pipeline. It goes to the storage area. Okay, uh, then from storage area, it goes to refinery. Then from refinery. it processes and goes to the uh, for usage so this is a complete diagram of uh, the entire process okay then now i will go to the downstream okay uh, from upstream uh, we have done the exploration and production at the midstream we did the processing and transportation and separation of uh, the uh, uh, the proper oils now uh, the we got the crude oil which is uh, ready for refinery okay so uh, in downstream uh, processing happens uh, processing and transporting and selling refined products made from the crude oil in, in downstream the entire crude oil processing happens okay so oil oil refining then supply uh, trading product marketing and retail these are the uh, major function of the uh, downstream operation what is refining refining produce a wide range of fuel like uh and which are used for what uh, for automotive transportation industry then electric uh, generation purpose you require like for furnace oil and diesel or gases uh, heating oils then you require petrochemical uh, production and uh, so many thousands of uh, uses are there for the oil so in refining um, all this uh, uh, process takes place uh, from crude oil to Uh, you get different different products, okay? Uh, like uh, LPG, naphtha, gas oil, and all. So, uh, in refining, all this uh, process takes place. So, once you do the refinery refining, it goes to uh, uh, for supply, trading, and transportation. Okay. So, so what happens in supply? Uh, how the supply happens? Because once you do the uh, refining, it goes to the storage area. from storage uh, then depending on the country's requirement uh, see for example india is the huge country so you have uh, north east west south and we have many refineries are there so normally the supply <coughs> uh, takes place of the petroleum products on the regional basis for example if you have refinery in bombay uh, mumbai uh, from mumbai Uh, it caters entire maharashtra karnataka and some product goes to the uh, uh, up to uh, this thing uh, karnataka goa and uh, it goes up to the vaisakha also because uh, in bombay the refining capacity is high uh, as compared to other states 
So Wysak, even though they have the refinery, the uh, the demand is high. So you have to uh, transport product through pipeline or as by uh, road or by uh, ship. Uh, so this is called supply. Okay, from uh, a refinery you produce, uh, it goes to the oil storage area. From oil storage area you supply uh, through pipe, pipeline or by truck or by ship. So that is called a supply. So uh, the all the product like diesel, uh, kerosene, uh, LPG, furnace oil, all the products are being uh, supplied to all over India. And whatever excess is available, it is exported to the uh, foreign countries. So for example, in India, uh, we don't have that much, but mainly we export uh, naphtha, uh, which uh, sometimes is the excess. Uh, uh, say for example, in um, ONGC, we have a lot of naphtha coming up. And uh, uh, now because of Reliance, uh, we have huge uh, uh, refining capacity. So ONGC exports naphtha. Uh, sometimes we export uh, naphtha from Mangalore refinery also. So uh, it happened, that is called trading. So and uh, so those uh, trading uh, operations has also taken place. Then, so as I explained to you earlier, there is exploration and production and crude oil storage, uh, then logistic, it's happened, then import, it goes to refinery, uh, so usages. So these are the different, different uh, product you get, gasoline, diesel, jet. See, gasoline is used for what? For the petrol pump. Diesel is used for the uh, petrol pump as well as for the uh, industries also are using. Jet fuel is used for the uh, aeroplanes. Uh, then uh, you get uh, this uh, uh, ethanol and uh, additives blended. So that also goes to the diesel pool. Okay. Then retail, uh, like uh, retail storages. Okay. So these are the uh, usage of oil from refinery. You, uh, so it goes to the uh, power plant also. Uh, some oil like furnace oil you use for power plants or sometimes you use uh, naphtha also sometimes you use gas LPG uh, for uh, power plants so these are the different different products we uh, supply uh, to different different uh, usages then you get uh, the uh, how the uh, the mode of transportation is uh, if you see here at the right extreme right uh, there is a pipeline uh, rail ship and by road so the different uh, types of uh, transportation uh, logistical operations are happens then marketing and retail see after the product is refined uh, then it goes for marketing uh, from the storages so it goes to the petrol pump for uh, diesel and petrol and uh, cng and lpg and all selling so it, it is called marketing okay then processing of natural gas also uh, takes place and it goes to the consumers for the uh, natural gas uh, for uses for the power plant and other industries. The uh, business characteristics of downstream and uh, oil and gas. See, it is a margin business. See, what do you call margin business means in when you refine the products, you know, what do you get? Crude oil. See, for example, you are getting crude oil at say, uh, $50 per barrel and you sell uh, say uh, keros, uh, gasoline, say petrol, you sell at $60 per barrel. So what is the refinery margin in here? Uh, 50 and 60. So $10, $10 is the refinery margin. That will be the revenue what refinery gets. So, uh, so this is a margin business. Refinery is a margin. It is always work on the refining margin business. So they have to be very careful, careful while buying the crude uh, or by, while uh, from the international market or from the uh, local market. So they have to see the uh, international prices, whether they are in line with their refinery margin or not. Before buying any crude for refinery, they do the proper uh, the simulation for proper uh, uh, study and they play whether uh, the uh, whatever crude yields we get uh, and the, the product we get out of the yield, um, they are uh, revenue, they are generating the revenue, they are profitable. Okay, so, uh, so refining is a margin business, very complex. Means refinery, if you see, 
all the refinery units are very complex refinery in refinery there are different different units are there which i will be explaining tomorrow uh, so uh, different different units are there like the distillation units are there hydro cracker then you have fccu platformer uh, vdu uh, isomerizer uh, very complex refinery is there because then uh, that's why uh, so if you see the entire unit it is in 50 or 100 acre land entire refinery you see but if is there are so many uh, small small units inside uh, they produce different different products okay uh, then uh, refining is a global perspective is very important while uh, setting up the refinery uh, plan a refinery unit uh, you have to see the global perspective whether uh, if you uh, have the refining additional refining capacity in any particular state whether uh it will give the uh, proper margin proper business uh, profits or not so it is a highly uh, global perspective we have to see whether supply demand position is uh, in line okay it is a fuels driven demand so uh, it is depends on the how much uh, fuel it is, it is, a, it is the entire refinery is depend on the supply demand position uh, so if we have the demand then only refinery gets excellent margin if you don't have the demand for the product then you cannot run the refinery at 100% so uh, you, if you don't run a refinery at 100% then your profit margin goes down so you have to be very careful while uh, planning your refinery in any particular region so these are the areas uh, which i have uh, covered uh, today see if you hear if you see i just explained to you uh, downstream segment is a business characteristics like diagram is a margin business okay margin is defined as the difference between the price realized for the product produced from the crude oil and the cost of the crude delivered to the refinery okay which i explained to you uh, so 50 dollar we are buying and selling at 60 dollar that is the refinery business. then the price of crude oil set the absolute level of product prices it may or may not affect refining or uh, marketing uh, margins okay the downstream margin tend to be reduced or squeezed when crude price increases often cannot be recovered in the marketplace that means uh, see uh, as per the international prices uh, the uh, daily prices are published okay so uh, when any refinery buy the crude oil uh, they have to make sure when the when they buy uh, the, there is a supply demand uh, situation is there or they have to Or the the crude oil prices, what they are buying, uh, uh, is in line with the uh, uh, domestic requirement also. So it is a very uh, you have to do the proper studies, and then you plan your crude oil uh, uh, import and or processing. Okay, uh, so these are the uh, uh, basic. Uh, so now uh, I think I will ask you the questions. Uh, we have covered very fast, but uh, you tell me. what is the uh, upstream what is midstream what is uh, downstream just i have given you the uh, just overview of uh, what is oil and gas sector okay tomorrow i will go in detailing what is uh, refinery uh, how the refining take place uh, process okay so based on the uh, today's uh, discussion let us have the we have 15 minutes for interactive session i want to understand you also Uh, because i don't want to continue to talking you will feel bored okay so um, uh, let me have the interaction with you uh, you have any questions i am ready to answer you if you have any clarification let us exchange our uh, thoughts okay please okay my dear friend uh, see we are here uh, to learn okay don't yes, get, don't be shy See if uh, unless you ask, nobody will give you. Okay, always in life uh, you have to ask. You have to uh, get the knowledge. Uh, so uh, if you keep quiet, uh, nobody will come at your door and uh, give you something, right? And the same way, knowledge is also like that. Unless you read, unless you study, unless you uh, ask the questions. Uh, you will not get clarified so it is very important um, when you do the study or when you learn anything you have to keep on asking questions 
you get clarified get concept cleared okay please so um how much do you think the oil price will increase sir, in the upcoming days see uh, due to this uh, scenario uh, covid 19 scenario the entire world supply demand position is very very uh, is, is got affected drastically uh, so uh, we expect the prices crude oil prices will be in the range of 45 to 55 dollar per barrel we will not go more than that for the next one year or 18 months that is the prediction what we are discussing in the trading circle so uh, this will be the range because uh, the most of the industries are suffering most of the logistic movement or uh, the uh, air movement is uh, on hold industries are not running uh, transportation is slowly picking up it's not only happening in india it is all over world so unless and until there is a demand for the product the prices will not go up so there is a demand supply situation here today so the prices will range will be in the range of this 45 to 55 dollar per barrel and so, so uh, uh, what about the scope of the youngsters uh, for getting into a uh, uh, job there be people this with this uh, price range no at this stage uh, most of the oil companies have the constraint to recruit the people you know uh, the youngsters so that's why uh, the best way today uh, why we ran this course uh, because uh, uh, the uh, at this stage most of the people will not get the placement so they at least they can upgrade themselves okay they should get the maximum knowledge during this period at least that is in our hand today because uh, not only uh, the youngsters like you but there are experienced people who have worked for 10 years 15 years or 20 years they are sitting at home they are not uh, so and uh, there are not many projects everything is on hold so but such, such situation will not last in oil and gas sector always bounce back is within next one or two years always bounce back because oil and gas industry is such that you cannot uh, hold any uh, job uh, see for example uh, if you have the oil and gas uh, refinery uh, and in refinery you cannot um, uh, keep uh, quiet for doing any maintenance are doing any main, uh, uh, rim, uh, if any major issues are there uh, you have to replace or you have to do the complete revamping so those projects uh, will have to take uh, uh, start coming up uh, and uh, uh, there are many many big projects are planned already by oil companies in all over okay for upgradation or for because most of the refineries are old uh, so uh, a lot of projects are there so there is a huge scope another one or two years time uh again uh, this uh, scenario will change don't worry uh, hello sir good evening sir good evening yeah i'm pallavi i want to ask you one question sir as yes. we had a day today upstream midstream and downstream i want to ask that company is uh, overall uh, doing all the three activities together or we can sort out companies with uh, upstream doing particular doing upstream job a uh, company with only doing mainstream uh, contents and other company with a downstream content yeah see as i explained to you uh, see what happen uh, one organization doesn't take all these functions see for example ongc i will tell you see ongc is having the oil oil blocks right okay. so they are the owner of the oil blocks okay and what they do they appoint the other companies to do the drilling operation uh, they will appoint some other company to the uh, uh, complete uh, engineering other uh, other company. so it is not one company there are all affiliated company uh, are doing different different uh, jobs so uh, one single company don't take uh, the entire task uh, hmm. stream or up, up stream midstream or downstream only uh, there are uh, there are some companies like um, uh, will do uh, uh, midstream and uh, uh, downstream okay, okay. Uh, but all the three uh, very difficult so we have to sort it according to when we see for any company so we have to now uh, sort according is it doing upstream job or mainstream or downstream right correct uh, so 
uh, you know their profile uh, uh, once you once you go through their profiles from the their side or uh, through your friends uh, you know what is their speciality whether they are upstream uh, expertise or midstream expertise or downstream expertise okay so uh, accordingly you have to select your career whether you would like to go in upstream midstream or downstream so we will be give, exchanging with you around 500 companies to you okay uh, in that all the companies names are there who are the upstream midstream downstream then uh, from now on so uh, you can start uh, selecting uh, then you, you can start sending your cvs for intern or for the uh, management trainees uh, most of the companies now online application they take okay so that we will be guiding you during these uh, sessions how to do that uh, how to approach interview mm -hmm. so i'll tell you last batch uh, some student already got placed in exxon mobil and some other companies okay in july we conducted online training and yes. based on that certificate they got full confidence and they got placed okay oh. so like this there are opportunities even covid 19 situation uh, they got the jobs it's not yeah. like that the, uh, uh, because uh, even covid 19 there are uh, old people are retiring okay mm -hmm. uh, so uh, they have to replace with somebody uh, and uh, nowadays uh, they they want cheap labor uh, cheap uh, people you know not labor cheap uh, uh, people uh, so they can train them by giving six months one one year training uh, mm -hmm. they understand the job particularly engineers have a high capacity to absorb any uh, knowledge or experience so uh, most of the companies appoint freshers also so you have good opportunity so basically we should have a good knowledge what is upstream midstream and downstream to apply exactly. yes that so you oh. see once you go through these uh, sessions uh, now uh, you will be in a position to give the uh, tell confidently what is upstream what is midstream what is downstream yeah yeah but sure yeah yeah more onwards uh, we will be going to downstream only completely uh, what is okay. refining in refining what are the plants uh, mm -hmm. which plant what uh, it produces you know mm -hmm. So you get you will get uh, in depth knowledge in addition to what you have studied in your colleges. You are yeah. studying uh, book knowledge, right? Exactly. So, huh, so here we are experiencing, uh, giving you our practical experience. Yeah. Now, practical experiences more than uh, uh, this thing. So this is what we have. Yeah. Thank so, you very much, sir. So within one hour or one and a half hour or two hours so, so far, uh, you could understand, right? Uh, uh, what is be upstream, midstream, downstream? So this is how uh, uh, these uh, experienced people can transform practical experience. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Hello. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. I'm doing my petrochemical engineering. As yes. you said, uh, in the oil and gas field, every department has its own uh, opportunities, right? Like mechanical, civil, electrical. So, what is the actual benefit for choosing petrochemical or petroleum engineering in the oil and gas field sir see uh, see uh, what happened uh, when you enter in any oil and gas industry uh, see even though you are a civil engineer so mostly what happens civil or mechanical they will be placed in the projects whereas you are a petrochemical engineer you will be placed in say drilling operation or in refining like this uh, so uh, there is always a segregation at the entry level okay so but, but after five years or 10 years or 15 years uh, it doesn't matter uh, what type of engineer you are so you can go in anywhere so this is how uh, it works but initially as a petroleum engineer you will be 99% uh, you will be placed in the uh, the drilling operation or in the um, uh, midstream area or downstream area so uh, it doesn't matter. Petroleum engineer, you have all the uh, subjects you have covered during your four years, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. Once you enter in any oil industry, there is a different, different departments. After three, four years, uh, you will be playing in the pool of uh, different departments. They, they will not keep you in one department. You will be rotated. Okay. For example, I joined and I, I worked almost uh, in Hindustan Petroleum when I joined. I started my career in uh, supply operation, uh, three years. Then I went to terminals in refinery, in Mahul refinery, Bombay, for three years. Then again came back to uh, marketing and trading. So like this, uh, once you uh, enter, uh, they will 
mold you in all the departments so they will make you a managers and future gms okay at entry level only these issues are there so they will so three year four year in one department next department will be different like this okay sir thank you sir yeah oh, hello sir good evening good evening sir most common interview question is who controls the oil prices who controls the oil prices yes sir so can See, you tell there is a opec oil producing uh, uh, organization is there opec okay so they control the uh, uh, the production and the oil prices and uh, there is a uh, proper system in place all the oil producing companies are the members of opec uh, okay under their guidance only the production uh, is uh, uh, is controlled uh, daily crude oil production is controlled once you crude oil production is controlled so opec is the body who control the prices however the daily prices uh, what you see fluctuation it depends on the supply demand positions Okay, sir. Because uh, some of the websites saying that the uh, OPEC countries are decide the price of crude oil, and some of the websites say the uh, Action Marketing is decide the crude oil price. Who? Action Market. Action Market. Of course. Yes, yeah, that's sir. Right, you know, supply demand. See, supply demand. See, uh, if if you have the uh, huge requirement in say for in India, you are imp you are started importing. Uh, in line with the opec only and uh, there is a huge demand of uh, crude oil then naturally uh, prices will go up if there is a big industrialization is happening in say china so the crude oil intake is more uh, so if the crude oil intake is import is more there that means uh, they are producing more so why they are producing more because there is a high demand once there is a high demand naturally there will prices will be up so always Uh, not only asian wherever uh, if if suddenly there is a, uh, a good uh, demand happening in us or in uh, europe uh, then naturally the price fluctuation will be there the price opec is uh, one another is a plat uh, is a international plat uh, is there a plat publication they call under the plat daily prices are derived based on various factors uh, like you are saying asian demand supply as well as Uh, if any war is there or if any uh, like uh, uh, now covid situation in covid situation what has happened the entire market has crashed because there was no demand the entire uh, uh, world was stand still for uh, last 5 6 month so the prices have gone to uh, minus 5 dollar 10 dollar 15 dollar you know which we have prices during 70s or 60s now uh and we have i have seen the prices up to 150 also and today we are 30 40 dollar 50 dollar prices so always the geography uh, this um, the uh, situation supply demand situation uh, plays a major role in pricing okay sir thank you sir. i want 71 questions because we have 71 participants so i want 71 questions hello sir good evening yes sir i am prashant kumar first of all i would like to thank you from all uh, from the all be uh, all on behalf of all to have uh, this beautiful presentation that uh, we have seen on internet expert and uh, sir i would like to ask a question uh, we have listened our term wild uh, wild cat well so can you please explain about the wild cat well what is it wild cat well rajesh explain to him he is a drilling operation man rajesh you are there hello yeah just explain to him you i do i want you to explain because young you are a young man explain to this guy what is wild cat operation wild cat well okay yeah uh, so basically uh, what happened uh, when we start doing the survey Uh, so this oil and gas operation it start with the exploration part so where we do the survey like physical exploration and so many techniques we used to deploy then we get a you know the physical data uh, where we uh, plot the maps and everything in the upstream part so once this plotted 
uh, you know, we'll be having the area, the location, uh, X, Y, Z location. So in this location, it will be assumed that it may store a oil and gas deposits. Okay, but it is not hundred percent is confirmed. So in that location, you you know, declare as a wild cat well, the well which you dig first, you know, to drill the oil. So it will be considered as a wild cat well. So here it is not a, a exploratory well or like a, you know it is not a production well. So that wells are entirely different. The first well which you target location you drill, so that location is declared as a wild cat. Okay, sir. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank so you. It will be followed followed by you know the wild cat followed by the exploratory well. Then it will be followed by the commercial drilling well. Then it will go for the production process. Then supply to the terminals. Okay, sir. Okay. Yeah. Is clear, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, I have one more question. Yeah. Sir, I, uh, as uh, like we have uh, experience in oil and oil and gas sector, and uh, after four or five years, if we would like to uh, establish some in, uh, oil and gas industry, like uh, in which sector we can start with, like uh, upstream, downstream, upstream, so which which would be the better option for us? Yeah. See. Uh, even even today you are a fresh graduate even today uh, you can start oil oil refi upstream midstream or downstream but uh, you should have the uh, funding available yeah even if you want to start upstream operation today and take the oil blocks and exploration and drilling operation okay uh, oh, see the very important is uh, money money power is required okay yeah. see uh, uh, the knowledge you can buy right from the outside, you can appoint the people, expert people, to manage the organization. Yes. To, to appoint them, you should have the strong funding in your hand, right? So, yes. so it's not uh, that uh, when you can do uh, either four year or five year or ten year. See uh, these uh, these areas like uh, midstream or uh, downstream or uh, upstream, you require huge uh, funding, millions of dollars. Okay. Uh, so, uh, very important. If you are a born businessman, uh, family, uh, you can talk to your uh, parents, prepare the plan. Uh, okay, I want to start the refinery. Uh, the this is the feasibility report. Uh, based on the feasibility report, say if you uh, if you say the project cost is say one billion dollar, and uh, normally if you want to start such type of project, at least you should have your own money at least twenty percent. Okay. So, balance eighty percent you can get from the uh, from the bankers or from the private venture capitalists. So, uh, because uh, oil industry has a big demand, big, big requirement. Okay, yeah. um, uh, there is always a product required. So, it is a viable uh, project. So, when the bank knows based on the feasibility report, they will grant you the loan. But the main is the initial seed capital of. 20-25%, how you will raise. For that, you have to be a born uh, rich or you have to have the good support from your parents or friends or from uh, somebody, right? Because the remaining money you are taking from the bank. So the entire 100% nobody will give you the loan, right? Thank you, sir. Yeah. And it's a good vision. You want to start after five years also. But uh, instead of do that, you can start trading. Uh, trading operation you don't require that much huge capital which i will explain to you during trading uh, trading session i will explain to you okay okay sir. thank you sir hello sir my name is sir uh, am i audible yes sir can you please explain the risk in the upstream downstream and middle stream sir like health issues and uh, etc uh risk yes sir related, risk. To, what? related to health uh, health uh, sir See, uh, there are no uh, risk involved in uh, any because we worked in um, uh, all these areas, no? Because all the protections are taken place. There is a health and safety uh, is a very important in oil and gas sector. There is a special department that is called EHS, Environment, Health and Safety. So this particular department is uh, totally monitoring entire operation in upstream, midstream, and downstream. So there is an independent department. So, for example, uh, how um, 
uh, the uh, health care are taken say if any project is going on so in line with the project there are norms uh, how to uh, do the uh, project uh, planning and uh, how to uh, uh, the manpower has to be placed where the material handling to be taken so all the trainings are given to the people who are on that particular project or in the uh, department so how to manage particularly uh, that particular refinery say if, if somebody is sitting in the refinery unit so how to manage that so all the health and safety measures are uh, uh, they have uh, trained and then only these people are placed to work there otherwise they are not fit to work there so oil and gas industry is totally uh, based on the uh, the training and skill development then only these people are assigned in particular department so these are the precautionary measures taken the only trained people goes there and work there okay thank you sir thank you sir even if you if you go today as a fresher they will not be allowed you to go to the uh, any particular field area unless you have been given basic training okay so how to enter into that area uh, where they had where the safety shoes okay so okay. all the basic trainings are given so this so your question Uh, is answered so there are no risk involved their risk are mitigated okay okay sir thank you sir yes please pallavi ha huh, sir uh, again i have a question like uh, you told about in you know, a upstream is includes exploration and production exploration drilling and production right yes. so what i am going to ask is exploration is a uh, wildcat well we found out as uh, ex- what i ex- got it and when drilling is done then production i want to ask is you said reserves are converted into cash right yes but uh, is it that direct uh, after upstream it is uh, the raw material has to follow that midstream right if i am getting right yeah yeah see what i mean to say uh, oh, converted into cash means your efforts got converted into cash your efforts mm-hmm. is uh, you have done the exploration you have spent huge money in uh, exploring uh, now mm. you have started drilling there also you have spent lot of money you are yeah. spending you are spending only uh, but no. after you started uh, getting the oil huh. this uh, you are lucky yeah that you are uh, whatever investment you have uh, made you start getting your cash return okay. <laughs> that is so do, it has to follow all the process upstream no, midstream no, and no, then no no See, see, for example, upstream, uh, one uh, company has taken the oil block, right? Yeah. So what they do? They will sell this crude oil to uh, midstream. Okay. Yeah. Uh, downstream, so they get their realization in advance before refining. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So they will sell this crude to the. Uh, th- there are four, four players I have explained to you. Yeah. NOC. Major. Uh, Major the, NOC. Yeah. Uh-huh. So one part who is doing the production. Excellent. Huh. So huh. They are selling this as soon as they get the production, they will sell this crude oil to Y company. So okay. they get the money immediately. Ah, huh. yes, yes. Then what happens? Yes. That crude will be purchased by the refinery. Hmm. Midstream will purchase the crude, and then they will process it. And after processing, they will get all the products like uh, naphtha, diesel, fuel, kerosene, and then they will get the cash out of that. They will realize their profit. Yeah. Okay. So the, each each layer have different uh, revenue model. Upstream uh-huh. have different revenue model. Midstream have different. Midstream what happen? They will also get the processing cost, storage cost, pipeline uh, yeah. cost. They will uh-huh. also get that. So yeah. each and every stream have the revenue model. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Hello, sir. So yeah. what are the scopes of mechanical engineers in our oil and gas sector? Oil and gas sector mechanical engineer have huge scope because without mechanical engineers, refinery or uh, drilling operation or structures, oil offshore industry, uh, you have huge huge scope. Huge. So what job role they defined? Yeah. Uh, what uh, job role they get in the oil and gas sector? You can place in the projects. You can place in the uh, engineering and maintenance department. You can be placed in the even production areas you can be placed in the uh, logistic supply logistic because storage uh, is managed by uh, mechanical engineers where you have to have the continuous 
repair, maintenance, uh, projects are coming up like fabrication, installation, pipelines, you know. So, my mechanical uh, role is uh, very high in oil and gas refining. They have major, uh, they have been, uh, in, because every time there are projects, maintenance work is going on. Okay. So, the mechanical engineer plays a very good role. Sir, why this uh, uh, crude oil is uh, fined in only in Gulf countries and some specific places, not everywhere? Because uh, that is the geogra geographical uh, uh, conditions of uh, that particular country. So that is not in our hand. That is a natural uh, uh, oil found uh, mostly in Gulf. Uh, and it is explored. OK, I'm saying explored. Now, what is happening in new, new areas in India also started uh, recently. Yeah. The government of India has already uh, allotted almost uh, many blocks in like Gohati, Assam, Gujarat. So India also started exploring. Earlier, India was not investing in exploration. They have started exploring. Now, uh, in America, if you see, they have huge oil uh, found, OK, as compared to uh, Gulf. So once you start exploring, for exploration, you require huge capital, huge money. So now, the countries are self-sufficient. So they started doing this. That's why they started getting the more oil. Sir, Adi, I have one doubt. Uh, you recently said uh, in this pandemic situation, uh, total oil and gas industries, uh, fuel prices are totally uh, crashed. But uh, in India, why they are uh, reduced that uh, fuel price? What began it? Reduced or increased? They are not reduced as much price, sir. Yeah, see, Indian pricing is different because uh, there is a formula price for India. What happened? Uh, the taxation plays very high role in India. That's why our prices are very high, like GST, MST, and so many things. Almost uh, 33, 34, 40 percent prices are on the tax. Uh, remaining are uh, the basic price. So that is a big problem here. Uh, as compared to other countries, they have less taxation, you know, like 5 percent, 10 percent. But India, more than 30, 40 percent taxation are there. So that's why our prices are high. Okay. Hello, sir. Yes. Sir, when it comes to oil and gas field, uh, whatever the videos we see and uh, what all the knowledge we get, everything, it seems to be a hardcore job, right? So they are, uh, uh, what to say, they are in their uniforms, uh, they are taking the drill bits and fixing, like that kind of stuff. So uh, what is it? What does it take to uh, work in an in an AC room like like that, sir? Do you understand my question, sir? See, I understood you. See, so you are a you are studying in which year now? Fine layer, sir. Yeah. So you are engineer, right? Yes. You are not supposed to do that job. Okay. You are not on the ground level. You are the supervisor. Okay. 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 You will not be. That is the only. Te those are technicians who will be doing that uh, job. Okay, okay, sir. Your job is to do the supervising, planning, uh, and uh, uh, complete monitoring. Okay, okay, sir. And designing. So, as a mechanical engineer or any engineer, you are not allowed. You will not be working uh, to lift the pipe or uh, uh, do the nut bolting and all. Uh, there is a different uh, category, uh, like a diploma engineers or IIT uh, uh, students. Uh, we'll be working in that area. Okay, okay, sir. But, but, uh, if you want to come up in your life, uh, if something goes wrong in any plant, and if required, you have to assist them also. Okay, okay. So we have to know ev everything. Yeah, as an engineer, yeah. you should know. Uh, and uh, see, that is your expertise. See. Yeah. Uh, what happens a diploma or ITI will have limited knowledge, but you have you have different uh, additional expertise. So you will be in a position to give a solution in a very short period. Okay. Okay, sir. That is your expertise. So uh, just you go and sit there. Oh, do like this, and uh, the the work will be fixed because you have better understanding as compared to them. Okay. Okay. Sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, good evening, sir. Good evening. 
सर व्हाट इज द क्राइटेरिया और क्वालिफिकेशन टू बिकम अ कंपनी मैन टू बिकम अ कंपनी मैन यस सर एज एज एंटरप्रेन्योर और बिजनेस मैन नो सर देर इज अ जॉब लाइक लाइक देर इज अ जॉब ऑफ अ कंपनी मैन He is a representative of a company which goes to the oil rig to uh, like uh, understand the production and uh, profits. No, no, uh, that is called uh, the uh, uh, the department head. You are talking. Uh, no, sir. Actually, uh, I am studying in M A C Petroleum Technology in Pune Wadia College. Hmm. So, sir, there is a job post known as company man. Uh, he is a representative of uh, third parties okay uh, so what happened they appoint him as a representative to manage the operation okay sir but what are the criteria to become a company man there no criteria uh, see any uh, graduate can work on that and you, you should have some experience uh, it doesn't require a mba right not required not required okay sir thank you See, basic engineering knowledge is more than enough to represent any companies. Uh, so you will be working on their behalf. So, so what happened? For example, uh, in India, say uh, there is a foreign company uh, like uh, say BP, okay, and they want somebody as their company man to represent in India, right? So uh, they will appoint you. What they will see? Uh, you are a graduate. Uh, you have such type of experience. Uh, once you fit into their criteria, they will appoint you as a company man to represent the, the, on their behalf. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Good so, evening, sir. Good evening. Sir, can you explain the conflict between U.S., Russia, and OPEC plus countries to determine the crude oil price? I think that not the pandemic situation is not only the reason for drop in crude oil price. the excess production of crude oil by them to occupy the crude oil to become crude oil chief uh, is the main reason for the drop in crude oil price see what happens so there is always a tussle between all these major oil companies okay oil, major oil, major uh, countries uh, particularly political reasons okay so what happened uh, just uh, to give the threat Uh, they will start producing more and pump uh, that is called non opec oil okay so there is that's why the tussles are there see there is a body opec body uh, see for example uh, if they have target to produce let's say 100 million barrels per month and uh, each company has been given quota uh, okay you should run uh, you should do the production this much only uh, each country have the quota depending on their capacities and all pump so uh, so this is this is all political they just play uh, like a cat and uh, a rat case you know this will keep going until human being is there that is that will be happening is clear yes sir it's clear sir thank you sir uh good evening sir i am ragunath and i am a petrochemical graduate a fresher yes ragunath uh, sir I, i have a uh, very much interest in drilling um, but uh, because i am a fresher uh, around us uh, my seniors and uh, colleagues are telling uh, getting a job in drilling uh, as a fresher is uh, not possible so try to work in uh, downstream for uh, minimum 3 uh, to 5 years and and then apply for a job like uh, upstream then you will get it, uh, get it easily is it possible to get a job in uh, upstream after uh, i worked in midstream sir see uh, uh, today's conditions are different because uh, now upstream area a lot of uh, the production uh, got affected because there is no supply uh, there is no demand so that's why uh, the production and exploration is uh, not happening much for next at least okay, uh, we don't know next four five years or what so but there are opportunities still because there are so many people are redundant or retiring so you may get some opportunities in uh, upstream uh, so we'll give you the name of the companies you try there 
uh, and uh, otherwise if you get somewhere in oil industry midstream or downstream join there and then uh, you can come back any time to that uh, upstream area okay yeah, so okay, at this stage in this situation whatever uh, job you get in oil industry you accept so there is a uh, you can change uh, later stage there is no issues okay sir okay thank you sir. So I think uh, there are no more many, many questions huh, now. So we'll. Uh, okay. Yes. Hello. Sir, I have yes. a question. Suppose if a person uh, wants to take uh, oil blocks on lease from government. Okay, sir. Yeah. Then uh, uh, th there is a procedure which includes the site surveys. So yes. what uh, those site surveys includes? Uh, what do they have to do in survey? And what do they have to check? See, site survey is a complete uh, uh, start from oil uh, testing to the uh, suspect and a lot of studies are required. Okay, so uh, there is a detailed uh, discussion on this. We will explain to you during the uh, drilling operation process. Uh, we will okay. cover all these things and uh, uh, see, if you want to take the oil block, there is a good, very good uh, system which uh, we will explain to you uh, okay, sir. how to acquire blocks. That is all possible. It's all procedure. Yeah, entire procedure we can explain. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Sir, what would be the role of an instrumentation engineer in the oil and gas sector? Without instrumentation engineer, refineries cannot work. Oil industry cannot work. Because uh, each and everywhere, uh, all the instruments are there. So, you heard, the instrument engineer has to, uh, to make sure uh, all the instruments are working in a proper condition, you know. So, it's a very good role uh, as an instrumentation engineer in oil and gas sector. Yes. A lot of instrument engineers are required. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Excuse me, sir. Uh, this is Benny here. Yeah. So, on uh, upstream, downstream, and midstream, uh, which uh, segment will have the most profit? Uh, most profit area will be uh, this uh, uh, will be in refining, okay? Because what happened, uh, refining uh, the margin base, continuous flow. Whereas uh, what happened in us upstream, there is always a up and down in the pricing and all these things. There is a huge operation, regular, a lot of expenses are there. So uh, as compared to upstream, midstream, uh, the refining gives the better margins. So, sir, uh, how do they balance that out? Because uh, the searching is obviously a very uh, important aspect because, uh, and they go through a lot of effort in finding this and all that. So, if they are not able to get uh, appropriate profit as to how much they should be getting, how do they balance it? No, that's why it is a complex process, no? So, uh, you have to balance. The, if, there are various mechanisms to balance it. Okay, uh, so see, you have to buy. Uh, if you if you, if you are coming to downstream, uh, uh, and if you want to process the crude, uh, you have to make sure you buy uh, the uh, mixed blend of crude, like uh, light crude, medium crude, or heavy crude. Do the blending and process it. So your cost of production is less. So you um, uh, maximize your uh, revenue mar margins. Uh, so this is the one thing. Uh, second uh, will be uh, the yield. Uh, you can play the yield with the uh, yield. So you try to maximize the yield where which gives the more pricing. So yield means production of uh, the finished products like LPG, naphtha, gas oil, fuel oil. So uh, there are various mechanisms to maximize uh, revenue. Okay, it is a uh, it's a complex process, uh, but uh, all the time uh, you don't get that uh, what. Uh, refinery margin what you are targeting because the market is such uh, it's a volatile market so most of the uh, refineries are uh, really uh, finding difficult times nowadays okay sir thank you sir yeah good evening sir good evening sir uh, i'm a chemical engineer student finally sir yeah Sir, um, foreign companies, uh, foreign oil and gas companies can take a freshers uh, or not uh, experience, guy. Uh, 
Yeah, they take pressures as a management trainee. They take pressures. So how to approach sir? How to approach? See, you visit their website, okay? And uh, there is a job portal. You download your CV, and uh, every year they appoint. For example, uh, last batch they picked up uh, uh, Exxon Mobil has picked up some girls and boys. Okay, sir. Yeah. Sir, uh, and um, another question, sir. What role of chemical engineers in midstream process, sir? Yeah. Midstream process, chemical engineer is, uh, is having a huge uh, role because uh, when the crude comes from the uh, uh, the uh, from the production area, it is happening in midstream as a processing. Okay. So processing, uh, the chemical engineer also plays a very good role here. No? Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Sir, yeah. Sir, being a petrochemical engineer again, uh, people always say that it's a wide scope and uh, it's a wide department. I can go anywhere, like uh, the fertilizer department, uh, yes. the chemicals, the pharma, the oil and gas, anywhere. Yes. So at last, I end up get confused. So what idea should I hold down to, sir? You have to focus. That's why this this particular course will give uh, to oil and gas focus. That's why we have uh, designed this course in such a way that at the end of the course session, you, you will find your way. Okay. 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 Thank you. Sir. Yes, please. Sir, I have a question. Yeah. How to start a business in uh, downstream marketing and retail? Yeah, like, uh, yeah. petrol pump. Yeah, it's very easy. Yeah. Petrol pump. Uh, see, you get the uh, all the oil companies give the advertisement in the uh, newspaper as well as on the their websites. So you apply. You get as a fresher also. You can get the petrol pump. So what is the eligibility criteria for that? Nothing. Even. Uh, uh, 10th or 12th, uh, or uh, anybody can get the petrol pump. There is no problem. Okay. See, basically, you have to have the land. Uh, yeah. And um, even if you don't have your own land, you can lease the land. Okay? Yeah. You can take on rent. And uh, you require, uh, see, uh, if you have the capital of, uh, say, if you have the lease land, uh, maximum 50 lakhs or 80 lakhs. You can start your petrol pump. Okay, sir. sir. But it should be on the uh, roadside or highway. Or yeah, the location should be good. Not only roadside. Even if it is in the city, and yeah. it is a crowded area, uh, mm -hmm. so it depends on the location. That's why uh, before uh, they give the uh, advertisement in the newspaper, uh, location wise. Okay. Yeah. So you have to select proper location where you can maximize your sale. See, this is the volume game. Petrol pump is a volume game. If you sell more, then only you get good commission. It is on a per liter commission you get. Okay. So, uh, maximum sale, maximum revenue. Okay. okay. Thank you. So, with this, I think uh, we, 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 uh, we have uh, so many sessions going on in future. We will answer your all of huh? them. Yes, Pallavi. Yes, sir. Uh, as, uh, yeah, I just uh, ask a small thing that in a downstream we have we are, we are, we, are, we have been told that selling products. But if someone th is uh, thinking for a small scale industry, right? So can uh, that uh, he can uh, manufacture uh, uh, some uh, refine uh, products using um, you know I want to say like yes, yes, yes. See, for example, kerosene. Uh, uh. From kerosene, you can get a lot of uh, other chemicals. Those uh. chemicals are required in food industry and other industries. Uh, then, uh, if you set up some small unit, uh, uh. Uh, take the feedstock as kerosene or naphtha, okay? okay. And then uh, you can derive some petrochemicals out of that. And uh. those chemicals you can sell to different industries. So, yeah. always. Uh, 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 that's why on oil and gas, there are many industries that are working, thousands of industries. Uh, uh -huh. there are small, small manufacturing units are there. Uh -huh. Okay. So the, what is the feedstock? 
stock is um, naphtha kerosene or okay. mg so uh, uh, no, no and also bitumen damper ah. uh, bitumen also you uh, you can have the bitumen unit you can uh, make lot of bitumen uh, products uh, for the road construction and uh, real estate so uh -huh. products you can manufacture for roofing you know uh, the roofing yeah. kits are there Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> waterproofing so uh, there are many uh, business opportunities are there yeah okay if you want to start yeah thank you sir good evening sir i am doing the petrochemical technology yeah uh, where do i have more scope either in upstream downstream or uh, middle stream sir the major scope will be in uh, of course downstream because uh, here a uh, huge amount of people are working there is a good scope in downstream uh, so, uh, so try to get into downstream but doesn't matter you once you enter into any uh, area there is a scope to go divert your uh, this thing as an engineer you can work anywhere okay thank you sir so don't restrict to you only to downstream If you get in mainstream, join there. Okay. Okay, sir. Yeah. Okay. I think uh, we'll uh, now. I just want to tell you uh, on daily basis, uh, whatever we cover, uh, you have to uh, prepare your assignment. Okay, daily assignment that is called whatever topic we have covered. Uh, so you have to write a brief note. You are understanding on the today's topic. it is compulsory yeah you have to up, up because we will be issuing the certificate at the end of uh, the session from our abu dhabi and uh, uae companies so this is a very good certificate to show uh, to go for any interview okay so where you got the internship so you can say this is engineering companies from abu dhabi or uae so you will be uh, uh, you will have more credits okay so Uh, if you don't complete this assignment i will not give the certificate i am telling you the daily you have to upload your daily assignment in the google folder already created so have you gone through those uh, google folders yes sir have you checked yes sir yes sir yeah so daily upload it uh, and what we will do we will uh, at the end of all the sessions you have uh, we will give the project format so whatever you topics you covered during uh, from day 1 until last uh, all the topics you have to prepare the project summary okay these are the projects these are the topics i have covered what is your understanding we will give the format so all the topics this will be very important you will not get anywhere in the world uh, all these segments you know refining uh, reservoir simulation drilling operation uh, uh, mechanical design as well as uh, structural engineering Uh, nowhere nobody will give you in 50 18 days 36 hours uh, this much knowledge so be, be focus you will learn lot in this sessions okay so uh, and submit your session uh, assignment daily uh, once you finish today try to submit tomorrow it's, it will take hardly half an hour to uh, sit down and write uh, type and uh, upload okay then every week uh, on saturday you give us the feedback uh, uh, if about uh, the mentors if, or even during the session also if you don't like anybody anything wrong or anything if you want something more you just express so it is a continuous process okay so don't wait until last sessions don't I, we don't want any complaint until last whatever you have raised whatever is there you speak freely here in the group okay we are all uh, even though we are industry people but i would like to consider you as our we are, we are friends okay so it's clear hello sir yeah sir can you make uh, can you clear make, give us a clear view on how to submit uh, what to submit on the assignments sir i told like, you no uh, we should so, type it or write no, it or what content yeah. should be there yeah for example i have given you today uh, upstream midstream downstream okay so you have to just uh there is a format already uploaded uh, uh on internship format is there and that format is just right there you are understanding on the topic that's all 
what do you understand about what is our upstream what is midstream and what is downstream what is your understanding okay so uh, i will be sharing this ppt also okay so you can uh, refer this ppt as well as through uh, your books or internet you will uh, read and just put only one or two paragraphs not theory okay just understanding of what you understood that's all not not much much time just during the today session you understood lot of thing right so you just write down on the paper so we have to write down on a paper and take snaps and upload it on the google folder no, no, no. you better you type better you type because uh, if you upload it will be clear okay. in the system because this will be permanent and where is it uh, google folder in the google drive it will be where is it google it is already created already created and this uh, our uh, coordinators will uh, advise you how to do that no okay sir okay okay sir thank you okay they will guide you now i think uh, with this uh, we'll close the session and uh, thank you very much uh, for your uh, participation i hope uh, uh, you like the session today yes sir yes sir yes sir thank you sir it is very thank nice thank you sir So thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir